welcome to Labor Lens. I am Sharon Ijatson. On this week's episode of the program, we have interesting news stories for you. We'll also be giving you a recap of activities that shaped the labor sector in the year 2019. We also have a special focus on the new national minimum wage and the need for a quick implementation across the state as workers can't wait to start earning this wage. Petroleum Tanker Drivers PTD, a branch of the National Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, Nupeng, has called on the federal government to clear Lagos roads of containers to avoid strike by January 15, 2020. They said it was unacceptable for its members to be forced to spend weeks before loading petroleum products at tank farms in Apatha, Lagos. The national chairman of the PTD says that the union has written severally to all appropriate authorities on the issue of Apapa gridlock, but rather than the situation to improve, it's getting worse. We may abandon Lagos Road for container. Let container continue to be king of the road in Lagos. There is no any, I don't think that any tanker driver need to stay more than one to two hours on the highway, on the road, leading to the depot in Lagos. Any, any truck that is, either you are going to the Coconut Axis or Tinker Island of uh, Marine Beach area here, it is the truck that is ready for loading. But to gain access to that place is hell. Our driver is spending three days on queue. No. It's not acceptable again. We are going to address it in the press conference. Let government go and tackle whatever causes it. If the container is bigger than Nigeria, then we withdraw our services from them. On Thursday, 18th of April, President Muhammadu Buhari assented to the Minimum Wage Repeal and Enactment Act 2019. Makes it compulsory for all employers of labor in Nigeria to pay to their workers the sum of 30,000 Naira. The development came after concerns that the average Nigerian struggles to make ends meet due to rising cost of living and an inflation rate nudging at 11.5% in Africa's leading oil producer. More than 87 million of Nigeria's 119 million people live in extreme poverty on less than $2 a day. Organized businesses are already paying up to, and in some instances, higher than that. In which case, they need not implement. It does not apply to them. But for as many companies as are paying below 30,000 Naira, we have their commitment to implement. Immediately, it is signed into law and we are very sure of the effective date. The increase in the minimum wage followed months of political wrangling, lengthy negotiation, and threats of strike by labor unions. In the event that this demand is not met, we will not guarantee continuous industrial peace and harmony. The state governors last year also rejected the 30,000 Naira minimum wage as impracticable, given the dwindling federal allocation they receive. Our position must not just reflect a pigo, but a sustainable a social strategy based on the ability and the capacity to pay, as well as reflective of all developmental needs in each state. The last increase in minimum wage in Nigeria was in 2011, when national wage was more than doubled from 7,500 Naira to 18,000 Naira. We are on the road to protest the non-implementation and refusal of, by, of some governors not to pay 30,000 Naira, which they voluntarily entered into. We believe that necessary lessons have been learned from what happened at the federal level. We issued appropriate letters. And we are expecting that by the end of this year, we should uh, be able to wrap up the negotiation at the state level. Uh, when we get to the bridge, we will cross it, but we have sent the appropriate signals that where we have problems, we will move in. 
The Minister of State for Labor, Festus Kayamu, recently announced that labor laws in the country will be reviewed to promote decent work. We are determined to bring our laws in line with um, all the requirements of ILO, and that was one of my major um, tasks when I came in, uh, desire. And I present to government, government approved it, that I had to start the process. So I am chairing the process. I am um, um, instigating the process right now. Workers share their thoughts on expectations for 2020. The year 2019, particularly with regards to labor issues in Nigeria, has been a wonderful year for us. It has been a win-win year for us. We started with the issue of delivering on the national minimum wage and we capped it up with uh, the delivery of the consequential adjustment. We are hopeful, uh, we are not pessimistic at all, and uh, we want to believe that in the coming year, things will be better than what we have in 2019. Considering the budget that was read by the president, and considering the promises, and also considering that there's also a promise of salary review for workers outside 30,000 Naira minimum wage, Considering that, I will say that my expectation is that with the reflection of the new salary and the, sal uh, the new in wage increase, uh, the uh, 30,000 minimum in worker salary from December and January continuing. The new wage, which comes into effect immediately, is applicable to both the private and public sectors. But smaller businesses, which employ fewer than 25 workers, are exempted. Though organized labor has called for impeachment of any state governor who refused to implement the 30,000 Naira new national minimum wage, many states have not put in place a negotiating committee between government and labor on the consequential adjustment of salaries. The states include Bauchi, Yobe, Rivers, Benwe, Gumbe, Kwara, Imu, Oshun, Ekiti, Oyo, Anambra, Taraba, Cross River. Ogun, Enugun, Nasarawa, Plato, Kogi, and Delta states. Only few states have commenced the implementation and payment of the new national minimum wage. They are Kaduna, Kebi, Lagos, Adamawa, and Jigawa states. Labor leaders insist they cannot guarantee industrial harmony in states that refused to implement the new national minimum wage and adjustment in salary consequent to negotiation reached between labor and government. During the year 2019, Labor Lens was able to profile labor leaders on different issues their sector is faced with. They shared their experience and also provide solutions to some of the challenges workers are faced with, which in turn affects the citizenry. A lot has been said about local government autonomy, and I'm very much aware of how you've been tagged, Mr. Local Government Autonomy. But I would like to move to the issue of minimum wage. The federal government has actually um, um, put his accent on 30,000 Naira as minimum wage, but we are aware that some of your worker, your members are actually um, still being underpaid the minimum that um, is approved by the government. Mm -hmm. um, any engagement, any follow-up as regards um, this set of people? Yes, a lot of engagement has been done by the union, a lot of actions, you know, street protests, uh, strike action and so on and so forth had been done. You could remember sometimes around 2014, 2015, uh, our branch of Plateau State, under the leadership of the, nation, uh, of the national leadership, engaged the government of Plateau State then for almost eight, we, eight months, non-stop but, uh, battle with government. But the, 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 the result was not so significant to address the issues. And you are also aware of the situation of local government workers in Zampara State, which is headed by the chairman of the Governor's Forum, who is also championing the issue of stopping the uh, implementation of the uh, uh, guideline issued by the NFIU. You can understand between the lines why the governors are opposed 
to having a functional local government is at, because they don't have the Nigerian people at heart. If for any reason any governor will support this guideline to be, that governor must be Zambara state governor. There are assumptions from many quarters as regards um, local government workers and some of the view that they have so many local government workers that are not functioning as they should. Um, who is to be blamed about um, this set of people? Whatever that is negative with local government system to do in Nigeria is caused by the level of encroachment into the exclusive preserves of the local government by the state government. Because no local government is allowed to operate as a tier of government across the country. We, local government has some exclusive preserve in the constitution. But the state government doesn't allow them to perform. Even the IGR that is expected to harness by a given by a local government within their own localities, the state government through the enactment of laws of the state assembly, in most cases, you solve those powers of the local government and uh, collect as a state, and the ten percent realized as a state IGR as provided by the constitution that was supposed to be. Uh, uh, also channeled through the state local government joint account. How many state government are doing that? It's good to have you on the program. Pleasure, mine. A lot has been happening in the oil and gas sector for a while and um, for the labor sector generally, um, the minister is back. That Senator Chris Ingige, as um, the president of Nupeng, can you share with us what your expectations will be from the newly appointed, re elected, or reappointed Minister for Labor? Well, uh, obviously, the Minister of Labor is not uh, a new post for you know, Dr. Senator Ingige. Uh, he has been there. He was there for the past four years, and I'm sure uh, he's a man that also knows his onions, you know, when it comes to uh, industrial relations. Uh, one thing you cannot take from him, uh, I think he's somebody too that, you know, is very alert and also proactive. You know, uh, I can say his first tenure there, uh, as minister, that uh, oil and gas worker didn't fare badly because uh, I knew a number of times uh, he intervened, you know, in our issues, and I would say such interventions were positive, you know, on our part. You know, and now that he's back, well, I know he's going to continue from where he stopped. Uh, there were several challenges. Uh, that were unstable, especially from Nupeng then, you know, and I think he's going to also take them up. Okay, so generally or specifically, what would you be expecting from him? Well, we want him to continue the fight against indecent employment in the country, and especially the oil and gas. You know, indecent employment uh, in the sense that uh, we have contracts, we continue to have jobs that have three months, six months, and one year contract duration. To us, those are indecent employment. No society, you know, should encourage that. You know, and majorly too, the contractors that are given this, these jobs, most of them don't have the capacity. So I think one major area I want him to look into is that how do we employ Nigerians? How are they employed? What kind of jobs is available for Nigerians? How can job or employment continue to be attractive to our team youth? So that see employment as a way of actually making a living rather than you know, seeking other means like what we're observing today, you know, Yahoo and all that. So I think he owns that responsibility to sanitize our employment sector 
and make sure that anybody that gets employment, you know, will get value for it. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you very much. A lot is happening in the electricity sector. I would like you to share your experience. Um, it's um, perceived that um, since the privatization of the sector, that um, we have some um, companies that are yet to comply with um, extant labor laws. What's your take on this? Yeah, uh, I think very, uh, some of them actually, you know, but we have been to a very large extent able to push. And as of now, there are just few that we need to engage in the next few months, you know, especially the generating companies. The discourse we've uh, been able to get conditions of services signed in Ibado, in Abuja, in Jos, in Kaduna, in Kano, uh, in Enugu. We are still having that of Ikeja, Benin, and Port Harcourt to be signed. But we have finished the uh, writing and drafting of these conditions of services, you know, waiting for dates. Uh, some of them may be using delay tactics on the issue of signing, but as far as we are concerned, you know, we have finished this. But a place like a Bean, Sapele, Uheli Power Station, and the power stations, apart from maybe one in the uh, Niger State, Kainji, Shiruru, Jeba, you know, those ones will be the next phase. The transmission company of Nigeria actually, you know, since it's still under government control, we're able to draft a new condition of service which has expired and we equally have reviewed it, but we have not signed the review, the copy. So that's the situation, you know, for some time now. From your experience, why would um, any company not want to allow workers to unionize? And why would they actually apply delay tactics in terms of ensuring that workers have condition of service? Well, uh, some of the companies that behave that way, apparently because of their history, some of them were formed under an environment that they were there to undermine workers. I, I can tell you that uh, the ones that they said bought a B, you know, uh, have been known to be that, to behave that way. Uh, they, they call their, uh, this industrial toot from Sahara oil. And Sahara oil, for all that I know as of today, don't have any condition of service for workers. And it was the same impunity they used in entering a good power plant. And they chose to be in court with us rather than sign condition of service. We have done one or two picket in there, and they decided for the matter to go to the Nigerian Industrial Court. So we went there for their claims we have struck off. They went back again. So, and we have been known to be patient, you know, to exhaust that avenue. There's this issue of um, 22 hospitals um, bid for concessioning. Um, what's your union um, reaction towards this development? Well, thank you. That's a very big question. That's not just my union, not just JOSU but the entire Nigerian people ought to really answer. But I want to give, I want to equip Nigerians before they answer it. First and foremost, concessioning is not a, a, a positive prescription for Nigeria. These concessionings, PPPs, privatization, commercialization, all these are embodied in what they call the PFIs private finance or financing initiative. 
these are initiatives that have failed even in the in Europe. In Europe, where the capa the, the, the citizenry has the capacity because of their wage system, has the capacity to buy better health packages, more expensive health packages. Yet it's been so costly that they are failing, even in America. These are failing systems. Why must people, because of their selfish uh, end or selfish, selfish considerations, because of their pecuniary interest, would want to prescribe such failing packages to the Nigerian system? In 2016, they, they, they wanted to do it. We went on our own advocacy, and some of the uh, president also saw reasons that that is not necessary, and they stood against it. Now they've come through behind the door again, and I pray that Mr. President will not fall for that trickery. What are the implications of this hospital concessioning? Now, once they concession the hospitals, it becomes a, a more of a private entity, and you can also you know very well that once the private entity comes into it, it becomes too expensive for the ordinary Nigerians to uh, access. It becomes, it cannot be available to the ordinary Nigerians. In a simple uh, uh, illustration, let me tell you now. Assuming you have a beautiful hospital, it has the state of, heart, state of the heart equipment, for staff, for manpower, I, would, I wouldn't say we lack any uh, the, the manpower. We have that. Now, it has all the staff that is needed, the manpower that is needed. Now, the common Nigerian walks into the hospital pr uh, premises because it is physically available. We say he has accessed the hospital. Not so. It's available. He has accessed it phys physically. But it gets to the point of getting the services service dispensation and it is not affordable it's not affordable then it works back that simply means that yes the hospital was physically available physically accessible but it is clinically not available and clinically not accessible for the nigerian common man all because it is not affordable so it, it concessioning straight stabs into the thing that holds UHC, Universal Health Coverage, together, which is the triple A, availability, accessibility, and affordability. Casualization and outsourcing of um, workers um, seems to be the other of the day. Um, nothing has really changed for a while. Um, can you tell us what are the plans of um, Labour leaders um, who attended the 2019 um, retreat on leadership in addressing the issue of casualization and outsourcing of staff? Yes, the NSC as a centre is doing its best to curtail the casualization challenge. Industrial unions are also queuing up and ensuring that they resist this uh, ugly situation of casualization. Unfortunately, the government is not doing enough because we will have the inspection unit from Ministry of Labor and uh, we expect that they should uh, actually be out for inspection in such a way that the law of Nigeria should be addressing some of these issues. Because when we say the struggle continue, is to enhance implementation and therefore, there is a place of uh, involvement by government. And uh, we believe the, sh the government involvement will help labor in addressing casualization issues because you find out that some of these employers rely on government protection. And so fighting them, they run to government. And the uh, government not also joining in fighting casualization is making it difficult. The success is becoming almost impossible because you fight today in construction you see uh, a, re a repetition of casualization conversion. We convert casuals to permanent staff every year, especially in the end of Chinese. So when you do that and believe that you have signed an agreement that on no account should anybody be employed under casual, and that agreement is signed by parties. But they will still tell you that something will happen within the year that before you come to the next year, 
they, 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 they repeat and the whole place is filled up with casuals. And we have made it now mandatory. It's now an annual meeting, which is, 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 is what making more clear of. Because when you fight for something and the next day he repeats, the next party that should come in should be government to sanction. But unfortunately, government also see China as probably their, their last hope. So a, a attempt to report Chinese companies to government is also suggesting that labor should fight their, fight their cause themselves. During the conference, it was um, re-emphasized that um, there are no jobs. Unemployment still seems to be on the rise. Um, from my findings, um, it's obvious that um, we don't have lots of state government um, looking inwards to see what more can be done in terms of um, ensuring that probably uh, more jobs are created, um, be it private or in the public sector. Um, what solutions were provided towards this development? The role of government and employment generation remains the key. It doesn't matter how the capital is intended to invest. Government is meant to provide the, the atmosphere for investment. The industries are going down. We are not producing anything in Nigeria. All we consume, 98% of our consumption, they are imported goods. So you can never, you can never be shocked with the rate of unemployment rise in Nigeria. It's expected. So the, the, the approaches to curbing this challenge is to look inward into our industri industrial sector, the manufacturing sector, what is happening, what are those things that Nigeria normally have competitive advantage upon that they have faith to. You have to concentrate on those things you have, raw materials that you can produce freely. How can a government, for how long are we going to continue to export crude oil and then import the same final product for consumption? We can take for the year 2019. Join us again in the year 2020 as we promise to continue to give you updates in the world of work and pay. Special thanks to my cameraman Kyle Dave Pagbamila. Special thanks to the video editor Kenneth Omobude. Special thanks to the supervising producer of Labor Lens, Festus Alabi, and also to the executive producer of Labor Lens, Teladin Jacob. Thank you very much for your support. A special thanks also to the labor unions that decided to let us tell their story stories from Nupen to Norge to Nui to Medical and Health Workers Union to Maritime Workers Union and so many other unions that allowed us um, into their offices for us to tell their stories. We do appreciate you. Let's do this again in the year 2020.